Hi everyone, this is a short, well maybe not so short, video uh, that gives you some uh, guidance on how to complete uh, Lab 7, specifically um, what it is you're doing in Step 8.2, uh, where you're actually typing in a uh, some code or uh, a script into uh, the uh, to the profile.d local dash umask dot sh file. Uh, as you can kind of tell, you, you have not been uh, taught what exactly it is that is happening here. Uh, that's one of the uh, shortcomings of this content from Red Hat Academy. So I just want to uh, walk you through some of this just so you understand exactly what it is that you're uh, uh, doing and to point out a couple of key features that you need to pay, uh, pay attention to. And then the second thing that I want to do is to explain how the UMask value works a little bit, uh, hopefully a little bit more clearly as it uh, pertains to your uh, course content. So first of all, you are asked to uh, create a file in the Etsy directory, the ETC directory, uh, called localumask.sh. Uh, essentially what is happening here is you are entering a script where you're going through some, uh, some testing and what you are doing is you are looking at the value of the user ID. So every single user has a unique user ID. Typically in, in Linux, anything above the value of 200 or greater is considered a non-system uh, user ID. That will vary from distribution to distribution. In Debian or Ubuntu type systems, that's often uh, one, uh, at 1,000. But essentially, anything above 199, 200 or greater, is considered a non-system user ID. And so what you're asking is you're going to look at the user ID of a particular user and verify that it is greater than 199, indicating that it is not a system user ID. And then, so that's and, then you're going to check the group, the group number of the uh, of that of that user you're going to take that user ID look at the group number okay and you'll notice here it's using the what look may look like a single quote that is in fact a back tick there is another video that I created uh, that talks about the distinction between a single quote and a back tick this is a back tick so make sure you use the back tick here um, and what you're doing is you're comparing the group number of the user with the user number of that user, right? Every user will have a unique name or, and a unique number. And typically, when a user is created, Linux will create a unique number for that user, say 1,000, and also assign them a group that they are belong to, typically the same number. So you might see student with a user ID of 1000 and a group number of 1000. So here they're making sure that the group number and the user number are identical, right? So they are above a system user and their group number and their user number match, which means they're likely to be an average typical user, okay? Uh, and if that is true, if both the user number is greater than 199 and the group number and the user number match, then we are going to set this UMask value to 007. We'll talk about what UMask does in just a bit. Right? If there, these, this is not true, if the user ID is less than one, is 199 or less and the group number does not match the uh, user number, then we are going to assign a UMask value of 022. And then we're going to uh, close out this if statement, this conditional evaluation, and, uh, and so we're essentially done with this piece of logic. We're going to save the file, which is what I just did over here. 
uh, and then uh, you will be able to get your correct evaluation or pass that part of the lab. All right. So the thing to pay attention here is uh, here in the uh, when you're typing this in, make sure you use the back tick around both of these uh, pieces of text and not the single quote. Okay, and so when we're done that, you can escape out of here and then right quit the uh, the file. All right, and then what I always recommend that you do is you have a quick check to make sure that any changes that you made actually took. So you might want to do a cat of this file um, to verify that actually uh, those that content actually happened as you expected. Okay, so the second thing I want to kind of cover here is deals with what UMask is and how it works and why it's going to be important, right? So right now, if I just uh, typed in my command UMask, I would see the current UMask value used by this user root, right? And as you can see here, it is 0, 0. To zero. If I exit it out of root and we returned back to the student account and typed umask, right, you can see that the umask value is slightly different. It's 0002 rather than 0022. So what does that mean? Okay, so it comes down to permissions. These are octal values that represent different types of permissions on files and directories. Right, so if I did a, a listing of my student account, uh, that's I'm going to get out of server B here. I'm going to return back to the workstation. I'm going to clear my screen. If I did a, uh, a listing of my directories for the student on workstation, you can see I've got several different directories here, right? Desktop, documents, downloads, etc. If I do the list long command, oop do it correctly, no typos, uh, I get a set of permissions, right? Where D indicates that I'm looking at a directory, not an individual file. And then each one of these sets of three refer to the permissions related to this directory as it applies to the user owner, in this case, student, the group owner is the second set of three, which in this case is the group of student and then other or anybody who is not the user or group owner and that is the third set right and so each one of these permissions is read write and execute right so how does this play out in terms of the numbers that we saw earlier right so if we pop over here what we can say is each one of these three sets of permissions user owner user permissions group permissions and other permissions has uh, a octal number of 777 if you have all three of them uh, activated so how does that pan out well the r the read permission has an octal value of four the write permission ha is given the octal value of two and then the execute permission is given the octal value of one. Okay, and so when you give somebody the read, write, and execute permission, you're essentially what you're doing is you're adding these things up. Four plus two plus one is seven. Okay, so if you have a permission of read, write, dash, which means they have read, write permission, but not execute permission, that file would have the permissions of four plus two, which would equal to six. If the file permission has a value of read dash x, that means they can read, they cannot write to that file or directory, but they do have execute permissions, that would have a 4 plus 1, right? 4 plus 1, which would equal to 5. All right? So it's just a straight translation of read, write, execute, that human, this kind of human friendly, to a number that Linux can understand because it's a machine and doesn't understand human language. Seven numbers are numbers are things that it understands. So these are just values to kind of represent the different types of permissions you might want to uh, give. Now, 
by default given no other information. Linux wants to give files a permission of 666, right? Number of the beast. It essentially means it wants to give it a read-write permission and a dash for the user, read-write permission and a dash for the group ownership, and a read-write permission with a dash without execution for anybody who is not student student, right? Uh, if you were creating a directory, the default permissions are 777. The, by default, directories are given read-write-execute, read-write-execute, and read-write-execute for all users. User, owner, group owner, and other owner. All right? That is not the most secure kind of thing. You do not want to have your uh, other user, somebody, you know, Biff or Tammy, uh, who is kind of poking around your system to be able to read and write the permissions of your files that you have in your account, right? So you want to kind of remove some of these permissions uh, so that they are a little bit more secure. So what the UMask value does is it kind of takes these default values that Linux wants to assign and changes them to modify them to something a little bit more reasonable. So the UMask value takes the default value of a file permission of 666 and it says take away the following values from each one of those permission sets. Right? So 002 means 6 minus 0, 6 minus 0, 6 minus 2. So that they end up would be a 664 because 6 minus 2 is 4, right? If this was a directory, right, the default value would be 777 with a UMask value of 002 would mean 7 minus 0, which is 7, 7 minus 0, which is 7, and 7 minus 2, which is 5. Right? And so you would have a, end up with a default value of when you create a new, a new file, the new directory permissions or the new file permissions would be 664 read write dash read write dash read only dash dash right if it was a directory you can see that it comes out as 775 which would be read write execute read write execute and read write dash so what does that look like in real life all right so let me just pop into over here on the machine pop over to the documents directory and I'm just going to create a file okay I'm going to create a file call it file one I'll do a list long so I can see my permissions you can see right by default my permissions are 664 right four for the value of read two for the value of write and no permissions to execute on that so it would be read so that 4 plus 2 is 6 for the student owner and then the next set would also apply to the student owner so read write execute and anybody who is not the student or a member of the group student would have to apply these permissions which is you're only allowed to read the file so if it had any contents in it you could see what was inside of it but you couldn't do anything with it All right Similarly, if I were to make a directory, right, uh, test directory, right, and I were to list the uh, permissions on that, you can see the permissions are read, write, execute, 7, 4 plus 2 plus 1. Uh, for the group student, the permissions are 7. Uh, X, W, and R, 4 plus 2 plus 1, and anybody who is not the user student or a member of the group student would have read and execute, all right, which is 4 plus 1. Oh, looks like I made a typo over here. There we go. All right. Uh, so all that means is that if you are the student user, you can... Uh, read that directory, read the contents of that directory, you can you can uh, write files into that directory and X for directories just merely means you're allowed to search inside of it. Right? You can look in to see what's, what is inside of it. 
Uh, so if you are a member of the group student, you are also allowed to read the contents of that directory, write a file or add files to that directory, and you're also allowed to search inside of that directory. Whereas if you are anybody else, the best that you can do is you can read the contents of that directory, you can see the file names, uh, and you're allowed to search inside of that directory, but you're not allowed to modify, add files, or anything like that. Okay. So what that means is when that's because my UMask value by default is 0002. I can modify that. Right? I can change that value to 0022. Right? Now when I do my UMask value, you can see it changes dynamically. It happens immediately. So any file that I create, so if I were to create a new file, file uh, new umask value for example right and did a list long of the contents right my umask value is 0, 0, 0022 two, which would mean uh, 7 minus 2 which is 5 which would be read and execute and then as you can see here by 6 minus 2 is 4 which would just be do, do, do. Uh, that stays the same, uh, but the um, the group permissions is now uh, a UMass value of two. So seven minus two is f or is four because the default value is six. So six minus two is four, which is just read permission, and then same for the other, right? So by changing our UMask value, we change what happens when a new file is created out of thin air. Okay, that's a good thing, right? Similarly, if I were to uh, make a directory uh, called um, new dir UMask, right, and show the permissions of that, Right, new dir umask. Right, notice how it is changed as well. So initially it was uh, 002, so it would be read write execute for the student owner, read write execute for the group owner, and then just read and execute for anybody else. But now with the new one, with our umask value of 022, right, by default. A new directory gets a 777. Minus 0 keeps R, W, and X exactly the same. But with a 2, it means 7 minus 2, which is 5, which gives you a value of read and execute. And the 2 for the other is, again, 4 plus 1, which is 5. Okay, So that's where UMask comes into play. The reason we did that uh, special file is because we can change our UMask value dynamically, but if we were to log out, right, if we were to exit from our student account and return back to another machine and then SSH back over to workstation, right, if we look at our UMask value now, it has returned to the default. Right, that UMask value is not permanent. It only uh, is present while you are actually logged into that account. Once you log out, everything reverts back to the default values. That uh, little file that we created over here is essentially saying, when you boot up, what do you want your do default values to be? All right, so that even when you log out and log back in again, what is your, going to be your UMask value by default? Normally it's going to be 007 um, uh, or 002 or something along those lines, but you can set it to be whatever you want it to be. So hopefully that was a little clarification on how UMask works and why you want, might want to uh, include this little text file in your configuration files such that you get to define what your UMask values are going to be when, for everybody on the system, when they boot up and log in 
rather than just uh, change it dynamically.